number compared to the traditional royalty number. 50 to 70 percent of your sales are going to come back to you. Now keep in mind that is after you factor in the cost of printing and distribution, which is why Amazon is a little bit of a behemoth. They take a lot of that printing and distribution cost. It's a beautiful business model if you're Amazon. Um, but you will get more of a royalty on your sales if you self-publish. And that said, you have all the costs, okay? Um, a rule of thumb out there is it's probably going to cost you at least $2,000 to self-publish your own book. And depending on how much help you need at different stages, it could be well above that. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, also, we have no change. That said, you'll see a lot of self-published authors that once they get their rhythm down with writing and designing and they've got a good team behind them that can help them push out their books, you'll see some self-published authors putting out six, seven, eight books a year because that's how fast they can turn around and get them out there, okay? Um, from the point where I decided that, I, yes, I am going to self-publish my book, it took me a little less than a year. Um, book two probably has taken me, well, it was further along in the process with that, but I mean, from final edit to being in print is going to be four months. So it's a much more accelerated timeline if you want to work on an accelerated timeline. And again, that's because you're the one doing a lot of your own legwork and stuff, developing things. Um, and obviously if you self-publish, you're, you're totally on your own for marketing. Okay, do not skip hiring an editor. I have an English degree. I tutored writing. My editor has still saved my life. <laughs> She's amazing. Um, you need that extra set of professional eyes and know your critique partners, I don't care how good they are, they're not going to cut it. Okay, you want a professional set of eyes on your manuscript, someone that really knows the rules of the English language and really has an eye for catching stuff. Um, that is why those professionals are professionals, because they're really, really good at it. Um, it's well worth the investment. It's probably the most expensive thing as you, as you go to print your book, as you go to publish your book, but it is probably the most important. Um, and it's kind of frustrating as a self-published author when you see books out there that are self-published that maybe aren't edited that great. Because that kind of makes it hard for all the rest of the self-published authors to really kind of keep up our reputation for the quality of our product. If someone's read a book that has typos all over it just because someone didn't bother to hire an editor, you know, and there's a lot of stuff out there like that. Um, expect to pay one to two cents a word. Um, so in math terms here, if you have a 100,000 word manuscript, if you're paying one cent a word, it's going to cost you about $1,000 to have it edited. Um, I would highly recommend finding someone that is including both a, a copy edit and a proof in that fee, okay? Um, my editor does both because what's going to happen is you're going to go through your copy edit and that's basically your line edit that they're looking for, they're not going to look at any more big structure changes, okay? They're not going to help you with character development or plot development. You're past that point, okay? Um, what they will look for is sentences that maybe sound funny, um, all of your grammatical stuff and commas and... Um, my editor also has been really helpful with formatting just so that it's easier to then upload into my formatting software. Um, but you definitely, and then what's happening as you go back and you change some of those sections that maybe sounded a little funny, you might make more typos and that's what the editor will then fix in the final proof. They'll make sure that, okay, yeah, you changed the sentence, it sounds great, but now you forgot a space at the end of the sentence or something silly like that. Um, good step is to ask for a sample edit. I submitted my first chapter to 
Um, I actually had like six different editors give me samples of my first chapter. Um, and what I found really interesting is none of them agreed on what to change. Um, I'm, it, it was, I was really surprising to me. But if you've done your job as a writer and you've really polished your manuscript, there's not going to be a lot of stuff that isn't um, subjective, okay? It's going to be like, okay, I think this sentence could be worded better. Someone else might think that sentence is fine, but the sentence after it is the one that's the problem, okay? So you really want to find an editor that understands your voice, that is trying, that likes your story, is helpful, um, and that is going to help bring your style of writing up to the surface. Like I had one one editor that gave me a sample and I have a little bit of Pennsylvania Dutch dialect still in me, you know, like from Schuylkill County here. Um, and I try to write that I'm being very professional in my writing but sometimes that little dialect slips in and um, I had one editor that like he wanted to reword like so much of it, and I'm like, oh, it's not, it's just, I can't, I can't write like that, like, I can't, um, so the editor that I chose, like, she, she fixed it, where it was really obvious, and it was grammatically wrong, but I think she still kind of preserved my voice a little bit. Um, once you have your final edit done, then you want to get into formatting. Um, you have a choice at this stage. Um, oh, and I have to talk faster because I don't have time to write. Um, you can do your own formatting. You can hire a company to do it for you. If you are not very good at computers, I highly recommend you hire someone to do it for you. Especially if you are doing something like with your picture book, if you're doing a kid's book with pictures. Formatting is really complicated. Um, or if you're doing a nonfiction book with a lot of photos or something. Um, you want to kind of weigh how much is your time worth to figure out the computer end of things. Uh, I consider myself pretty darn good at computers, and I still had to contact tech support a time or two while I was in the process of editing. And thankfully I did figure, not editing, formatting, um, but thankfully I did figure it out and I did have really good tech support. Um, there's a couple different programs on the market. market. Um, the one I use is Atticus. So it, when you pull it up, it kind of looks like this. And you can basically choose what you want your chapters to look like. You can choose your font, your size of your book. Um, you guys should have seen me when I was trying to decide what size to make my book. I literally sat down at my kitchen table with like 10 of my favorite books and I like took a ruler and I measured the margins and I measured the fonts and I measured the size of the covers. Like you, you kind of have to decide what you want it to look like. Um, I chose my book to be like this size because I wanted it to have like a little bit of a beachy read feel. Okay. Um, you guys have probably seen a lot of the mass market paperbacks. I'm trying to look if there's any around in this room. But you actually don't want to do it smaller than this size because mass market paperback is generally considered a cheaper book and you won't be able to price your book very competitively. Now that said, I printed mine big like that and you'll see how thick mine are. Okay? These are two of my critique partner's books. They went much thinner, much cheaper to print. <laughs> um, and they have because they have the bigger pages. Remember, the size of the pages is going to affect how much it costs to actually print your book. Okay. Um, you also have to get a cover. If you don't have experience in graphic design, hire someone. This is another very technically complicated thing. You have to download templates from whatever printer you're using and then your cover designer can upload what you want. Um, you want it to be something eye-catching. 
You want it to be something relevant. Um, when I was working with my cover designer, who is she's her contact info is also in that list of things. She's another local. Um, she's outside of Oryxburg here somewhere. Um, but you want she gave me a couple samples and I got to kind of pick what I liked, what I didn't like. I went with this one. It's probably the plainest out of the three she designed, but I kind of wanted it to be a little plain. I didn't really want too romancy of a cover because my book isn't entirely a romance, like even though there's a lot of those elements in it. Um, and I also wanted something that would be easy to redesign for the next two books in the series, because I knew I had a series. Um, so my second cover, which is still a secret at this time, is very kind of similar to this. Different colors, different shield in the front, but it goes along the same theme. Um, the blurb on the back of your book is the hardest thing to write. Um, you basically need to tell people who your main characters are, what your plot is, why do we care about your plot, make it sound really exciting that they absolutely cannot put this book down, they have to leave the bookstore with it, and you have to do that all in one paragraph. Good luck. It's really hard. Um, I threw this slide in at the last minute because this is a question I think a lot of self-published authors face. Do you need an ISBN? And the answer is, it depends on how you are going to publish your book. Um, if you are only going to publish through one distributor, for like Amazon, for example, no, you technically don't need an ISBN. They will assign one to you. However, if you move your book from Amazon to like Barnes & Noble, then you need, it, it won't transfer. So then you're either going to be selling your book with two different ISBNs, or you could just buy your own ISBN, and then it will be consistent across all platforms. Okay? What is an ISBN? That is the number on the barcode on the back of the book. Every book has an ISBN because that is how they identify it. Okay? Um, Ebooks do not need ISBNs. Um, Paperbacks do, but like I said, the distributor can give you one for free unless you're going to mix it across different distributors. They're not cheap either. One ISBN is $125. Um, I ended up buying the package of 10, which is $295, because I already knew that I had multiple books in the works and I was going to use them all. But depending on what your purposes are, you know, um, just something to be aware of. Boker. That link is also in your handout, um, is the only USBN seller in the United States. So they kind of have a monopoly on it. Um, they also sell barcodes, by the way. You do not need to buy a barcode. There's enough places online that you can generate one for free. And like even Ingram Spark generates a barcode for you. So you don't really have to worry about the whole barcode thing. Um, this is important down here. Bookstores don't like Amazon. Um, don't even mention that your book is only published on Amazon if that is the case. Amazon's platform makes it so easy to self-publish. Um, that is how I put it on first. It's easy. They're, they're very user-friendly. Um, but they're user-friendly for a reason. They want the monopoly. They want the monopoly on your book. Um, Ingram Spark is the other big distributor that will actually, if you if you put it on Ingram Spark, that will they will distribute it to all the other booksellers, whether it's bookstores, libraries, um, Barnes and Noble, Kobo, Bookshop.org. Um, Um, so if you do want it to get into bookstores, don't go up to them and say, hey, my book's on Amazon. You can get it from Amazon. I made that mistake. I kicked myself in the butt. Um, and it was actually a bookstore owner that told me um, that, that little secret. 
you want to have it on Ingram Spark. That way, the booksellers can get it from there. What happens with Ingram is once you put your book on Ingram, you actually sell it at a wholesale rate to booksellers. That is what allows them to put it in their shops. You still, if you set your prices right, you'll still get your royalty, you'll still get your commission back. Um, but it will, it, bottom line, even Amazon does not sell books that are only printed from Amazon in their bookstores, which is interesting. There's physical Amazon bookstores out there in the world. They won't carry only Amazon printed books, which is interesting. Um, if you want to register your copyright with Library of Congress, you definitely want your own ISBN. That's the first thing they'll ask for. So, kind of like I was just talking about, I'm going to try to roll faster here because I do want to have time to break off into groups. Um, your, your big options are Amazon, Ingram Spark, Barnes & Noble, you can publish directly through them, kind of just like Amazon, okay? Um, you can also do a small press. There is one locally in York, which is called Maple Press, that I'm currently looking into. And they actually have very competitive printing rates. Um, so what I'm probably going to end up doing is printing my books through them for my author copies that I'm selling directly um, and then using Amazon and Ingram to print their own. Um, it's actually Ingram's quality of printing is, I think, a whole other step up from Amazon's quality of printing. And I can't wait to see what Maple Press's quality of printing is because I've heard that they're even better. Um, like my back cover, you guys can we can look at these later and pass them around. My Amazon back cover, you can kind of read the print, but it's kind of faded. And I was like, oh, okay, it's just the font that we chose when we designed the cover. It comes out crystal clear on Ingram's printing. So just something to note. Now this copy, same exact book runs about $2 more for me to print than this one. So you got that, but that's the difference in quality. So how wide you want to make your book go is kind of going to depend on where your audience is. Um, the big thing with Amazon's Kindle Unlimited program is if you want your book, Kindle Unlimited is like a subscription service. So that readers pay like $10 a month, they can read as many books that are in the Kindle Unlimited program as they want. And then you as the author get kicked back um, a, a, a royalty based on how many pages of your book are read. So if you've got, I mean you can have thousands of page reads a day. Um, that said, if you want your book in Kindle Unlimited, you are not allowed to have your book in a digital form anywhere else on the internet. So again, that's Amazon kind of taking up that monopoly. Kindle Unlimited readers go through a lot of books, guys. I, I had it for a while, I loved it. I would pour through like a book every two days. And they're all free because I paid my $10. So I could read these like six, seven dollar books, like I could read 20 of them in a month, you know? But the difference is, now you're stuck there and you can't have the readers that are looking on Barnes & Noble or Google Play or Apple or any of the other readers out there, you know, that you only have the Amazon customers. So it depends on, is your book a, a book that is really going to explode on Kindle Unlimited or not? Um, it, it's, it's one of those things you're probably going to have to research a little bit, maybe test the waters and you can pull it back out of Kindle Unlimited at any time and go wide, but you do have to pull it out of Kindle Unlimited before you can go wide. Um, and then how broad do you want to reach? Do you want it in bookstores? If you just want it online, then you're going to kind of approach things differently. Um, if you, Some of you might only want to print, like, I don't know, a small number of copies and give them to family and friends. You might not want to share your book with the whole wide world. That's okay too. Um, that's where you might want to go with a small press like Maple Press and do like a limited run that you're then going to distribute. And the other thing is, do you want to be distributing books yourself? That's a lot of shipping if you do. 
It is possible. There's a lot of authors out there that are doing it, but that's how it goes. Um, last step is to actually publish. Go online, click that publish button. Okay, now your book's in print. Yay! Plan a release. Plan your marketing, research marketing. Um, I'm not good at marketing. <laughs> I'm working on it. It's a learning curve. Um, you have to, my big word of caution, guys, is be careful of Amazon ads. I lost like an entire month's um, royalties running two days of Amazon ads because I didn't hit the right target markets and I paid for all these clicks and nobody actually bought the book. Um, so you have to really kind of see where your market is. And that, and that wasn't just me exclusively. That seems to be a very common thing with Amazon. <laughs> um, I've tried some other online things. I'm still experimenting with what works, what doesn't work. Um, there's people that will tell you way more about marketing than I could. Um, but do your research before you launch the book because your launch is how you're going to beat that the, the sales algorithms. That's what's going to get your book visible, okay? If you want it to be visible on Amazon, like that it just pops up when you say, okay, I'm looking for a book to buy today. You want your book to pop up? You need to really master that algorithm and get your sales up and get your keywords right um, so that it becomes visible. Otherwise, it gets buried. Um, do you have any advice for uh, Amazon advertising uh, so that you're not just a grain of sand on the scraping beach of, of getting your book profiled and put it up there on Amazon? Because that seems to be like the biggest That's drawback the of everything. You could write a great book, but it sits and in no one Amazon sees it. And, nobody, <laughs> and nobody sees Which it. Which is why I'm doing in-person live things. Okay. Good. I have found that getting in person is way better for my book than what do you mean I could just spend throwing at it online? So book signings and, and things? I'm trying to do book signings. I'm trying to do events like this. I'm trying to, I want to actually, the Minds is a medieval novel. I want to get to Ren Fairs this year. I want to get to medieval fairs. Like that's my target market, people that love knights and tournaments. And then the other half of that question is, do you sell the books through you or do you recommend them go back to Amazon because Both. you obviously need reviews and Amazon right. will not publish a review of anybody that doesn't buy the book through Amazon. Yes. We're talking about reviews next. Good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. I will come back to that. Um, to know what, what marketing is working, you... Ah! Use your sales reports, okay? <laughs> um, they will tell you what you're doing that actually makes a tick in sales, okay? Um, I did a coffee shop and I got a little bit of press. That was probably the best thing that happened for my sales. Now at that time I still had not told most of my family that I had written a book. So a lot of them saw me in the paper and they were like, oh, you wrote a book, I'm going to go buy it now. So it was good, and I kind of lost my pen name a little bit, but it, it, that was kind of the boost. And it uh, honestly was a good thing because it gave me the confidence to then tell more people, oh, yeah, by the way, I wrote a book. And then they tell more people, oh, by the way, this book's really good. And then it kind of spreads from there. Um, then we get into begging for reviews, okay? Reviews are key. Um, what I did, and mo what most self-published authors are doing, is they get art readers, okay? Advanced reader copies, okay? It's the pre-publication copy. Um, you can print, get them from Amazon or whoever your printer is before your actual publication date. And what I did is I gave them out to, actually I, I had a client, she hooked me up with a bunch of her friends that I didn't even know. So I got totally stranger sets of eyes on this book. And then they went on and they left the very first reviews on Amazon for me. Um, they are allowed to do that if they have not bought the book from Amazon. If they write in the script, I got an advanced copy of this book from the author. Okay? The same thing, like if you guys buy a book directly from an author, you can go on Amazon 
and leave a review. And Amazon will sometimes like protest, be like, oh, you didn't actually read this book. If, if you write on that review, I got my copy directly from the author, then it holds more standing. Be very careful leaving reviews for authors if you did not buy your book from the seller, like, like Amazon, for example, because they actually, if they flag it, they can pull all of your reviews. And then you can use all of your reviews and you have to start from scratch. Doesn't matter how many, doesn't matter how legit they are, that's what can happen, okay? There are, in the last page of your papers, is that list of links, BookBub and Goodreads. Anyone can leave reviews on your book. They do not have to buy it. So anyone that's reading it at the library can read the book um, and leave reviews. Um, if you're buying the book directly from the author, you can leave a review. I highly recommend people leave reviews there because they hold just as much standing as leaving it directly on Amazon. Now you want reviews directly on Amazon too. Um, so if you have friends and family that you know have bought your book on Amazon, tell them, please, please, please leave me a review because then they have that verified symbol next to their review because they actually bought it, okay? And the same thing like total strangers, like you really kind of have to beg for reviews. Um, and as writers, return the favor. Any book that you read, go pull that book up on, if you bought it from Amazon, please leave their Amazon review. If you bought the book from the library or something, go on Goodreads or BookBub and leave the author a review. Especially, you'll be surprised how some authors you might think are actually pretty big may only have like 10 reviews on those sites. And if you give them, like you really need to have 50, 60, 100, 5,000 reviews to really get some standing on those search algorithms. And that's what makes your book visible. <laughs> Don't get frustrated. <laughs> okay, um, my last list of things to watch out for. No one should ask you to pay to publish your book. If they are asking you for money to publish your book, they are not a publisher, they are a printer. And if you go at them and that's what you want to do and you are aware of that, then more power to you. But they're not going to sell you copies of your book if you're paying them, okay? Um, read your contracts carefully. That includes any contract that you're doing with any online bookseller. Amazon has specific things that can and cannot be in your book. Okay, um, and certain things that can and cannot be on your covers, certain keywords that you can and cannot use. Um, know these things. Otherwise, there has have been authors that have had their books entirely pulled off of Amazon without warning because they missed one of the fine print rules. Okay, it's a big problem nowadays, actually, but something to keep in mind. Okay. Um, there are a lot of programs to help you write. It's up to you how much help you need, okay? If you find them useful, more power to you. Um, really, Microsoft Word, which usually is pretty standard, usually you can do all the formatting and all the work that you need on that. And then you would just need to get your secondary formatting software to actually make the book itself. Um, Atticus ran me maybe $125 when I bought Atticus. Um, and that was, and I mean, Word was standard on my laptop. Um, you can pay for reviews. They get pricey. Is it worth the trade-off? Okay. Um, a lot of those trade review sites are very advantageous to help you getting your book into libraries and bookstores and people that you're not actually meeting face to face and selling your product to them directly. Um, but um, be careful how much you spend to get them. You have to make sure that you're going to sell enough copies to make it worthwhile. Um, if you plan in advance and you're not in a hurry to release your book, 
submit it to some of the trade reviews places. There are trade reviewers that take independently published books. Um, and if you're working with a publisher, they should be submitting it to the trade reviews prior to publication so that they get the, these are, when, I, when, when I say trade reviews, like these are the really in-depth, like, the New York Times says that this book is the best one to ever come out ever. Like, that's a trade review, okay? If you can get that kind of thing behind your book, it really does increase the marketing capability. Oh, yeah, and hit save often, guys. <laughs> don't forget to save your work. And don't forget to save your work in multiple places. Saving it on your laptop is fine. Back it up on a flash drive, okay? You do not want your computer to crash and now you've lost an entire year's work of writing because you didn't have it on any other secondary medium. Okay? Save it, save it, save it, save it. Now we can get started. Okay, questions. Right. I had a question. Yes, um, taking questions. So it, let's say you aren't sure if you want to go traditional or self-published route, but it sounds like there's a lot to self-publishing and you've never done it before. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Are there agents that you can go to that can help you with the self-publishing process? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so one, first of all, it doesn't hurt to query agents and try traditional publishing first. Mm -hmm. And then if it falls through and the process is taking too long and you lose your patience, don't give up on your book. It doesn't mean you don't have a good book. It just may not be what they're looking for at that time. Um, then if you want to shift into self-publishing and you're not up for all of the legwork, there are some sites that help streamline the process, okay? Um, first of all, you have that option of going with a small publisher, which basically you're self-publishing, but they're doing some of the work. Be careful with that, that you want to know, are you going to have to relinquish the rights to your book, or are you going to maintain the rights to your book? You want to maintain the rights to your book if you can, depending on the situation, because you're the one that's going to go to bat for your book and push it out however many directions it needs to go. And you want to have control of the process, okay? Um, draft to digital, the link is in the back on that list, is one of the top kind of intermediaries I've seen for those who want to self-publish but don't want to do all the legwork, okay? They will format, they will distribute. They take, they don't charge you a fee to do it, but they will take a higher percentage of your royalties for themselves, mm -hmm. which is fair because they're doing the work. Yeah. Um, so you have to kind of make a trade off. And, and you still will own the, the rights to your book. So if you decide, hey, I don't want to have it on Draft to Digital anymore, you can pull it off and put it out there yourself. So it gives you a good option. Um, that's the number one that I've seen, I didn't bring, I had another critique partner, she published hers through there, I didn't bring that book along, but it, her book is beautiful, it's beautiful, and it, she did it through draft to digital beautiful formatting and everything, so, yes. The uh, resources that you gave, the links, yes. I'm wondering, um, how do you know when you're totally a novice, in any of this that you can trust and like there's so many scammers out there how do you know that some first of all I guess like you said if they're asking for money it's a red flag but um, you know how do you know I'm, I'm guessing these are good places to start that are trusted links uh, for not for dealing with legitimate companies or resources. My other question is if you're writing just say like romance novels, mm -hmm. you'll see like we want your book like in the newspaper or somewhere, Harlequin or whatever. Um, you know they're publishing these things, there's thousands of them I guess. Do they own the book because you write for them? Is that how that works? It depends or? on the scenario. You have to read the contract on an individual basis. Um, Harlequin I think think does take the rights to your book, they will go to bat for you to market that book because Harlequin readers, if, if assuming your book is what Harlequin wants. Um, my second book, I actually entered a contest through Harlequin and it wasn't anything what they were 
they wanted, but they wanted, they, they were very polite to me in responding. Um, but they're looking for a very, very specific thing. Um, if they select it, you probably would relinquish your rights, but they would, like a big publisher like that is going to really go to bat for you and hopefully market and stuff. Um, your, your other question with the legitimacy, do your research. Look, like Google, if you're thinking about using a site, Google other people's experiences with that site. Um, I really was looking at some small printer publishers when I was first looking about what I was going to do. Um, and there was one publisher I was all excited about. I queried them. They instantly got back to me. They're like, we want to read the rest of your manuscript. And then it wasn't until then that I kind of was like, okay, what are other authors' reactions to this publisher? And the reviews were horrible. They basically, they basically stole these authors' works. So Google, do some Googling with whoever you use. Um, the links that I gave you should be pretty darn good. <laughs> They're ones that I've used personally, um, except for draft to digital. I have not used them, but I've known people that have. Um, and they have a pretty good repertoire. Um, one of the links I shared is to Reddit. Reddit self-publish. Okay? It, it is technically a social media forum if you're not familiar with it, but it is a wealth of resources. Um, you, can, you, you can research through them, you can ask questions on there, and it's just a really supportive community. So like, if you have questions, if you can't find the answer there, you can ask and someone out there probably has the answer. Um, so I've done that with when I had questions about okay, the, the legitimacy of something and whatnot, you know? Other questions? Illustrator. If you want to use an illustrator, yes. is that something you can do yourself and pay an illustrator? Or is that something you would, especially if you were in a self publish That's a great question. Okay. Um, I'm sure that answer is as varied as anything. As anything. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you could pay someone a lump sum to illustrate the book. Or you... <coughs> might have, you could probably work it that they got a percentage of royalty or something. Like your your options are probably endless. Okay. You just have to discuss it with them and see what they're up for. And that kind of thing. So if you want to use an, an illustrator, um, yes. say for example for a children's book, um, before you even submit a manuscript, you should have your illustrator and your illustrations. Or I'm not as familiar with children's books, so I haven't done that. So I'm not sure how that would work. Like if you were submitting it to mm -hmm. a traditional publisher. Yeah. Or even if you decided you wanted to self-publish, obviously you would need to have that ahead of right. time. Right, yeah. If you were self-publishing, you definitely need that ahead of time. Um, if you were looking, I, my feeling would probably be if you're looking to traditionally publish, you would probably want to have your illustrations complete because that's a huge part of a children's book is the images. Yeah, I wasn't sure if they liked your book, if they would assign their own illustrator. I don't know. You, you published, right? So, like, um, yeah. what I've read and understood is that <clears throat> if you go traditional publishing, they want to choose the, the uh, illustrator for you. They very rarely okay. accept books that come with the illustrations. They want okay. to read it, decide what they like, so and, um, yeah, and then they'll put you with an illustrator. For me, I'm self, well, probably self-publishing. Um, so I have a friend who is a very good illustrator, and she did all the illustrations for me. Um, you can hire an illustrator. There's freelance illustrators out there if you're self-publishing, or you have to have a friend who's really good, and you can work together and try to, you know. So that's kind of what I found in research. So. Thank you. Excellent. You have a question? Uh, do you have any opinion on Audible? I don't, because I haven't used them. I think it's a great thing. Um, I don't quite understand the process of making them yet and how you do that. It's probably kind of like the illustrating, like I don't know if like as a self-published author. From what I've heard, it, as a self-published author that Audible could actually approach you and then ask to buy the rights to the Audible. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how true that is because I haven't gone to that point. Yeah, well, I have one of my books as an audible. Okay. But it's, <laughs> I just wanted your take on it because 
uh, I haven't made a penny off of it. Oh. And apparently they set their own prices and they put them in their own places. I have no idea where this book is or anywhere else. It, it has won an award through Audibles, but I, it, I have no control at all over it. I just wanted to pick And you're not getting any royalty from it? Nothing. Zippo. Because you have to sell so many uh, for them even to pay you. So if you have to sell 100 yeah. books for them, they give you 10 bucks. Okay. But I, I just wanted to know if you had any experience with that. I don't. I've heard it's a great thing to have it on Audible, but that's crazy that you haven't seen it. Well, it's, yet. it's expensive because you have right. to hire somebody to actually read the book for right. you. Right. Well, I could have done it, but I have a funky voice, so I had somebody do it for me. It cost me a fortune. It's out there. It's a little book. It's a small book. Right. But uh, I have no. I can't get any information at all from them where it is or, or anything else. And they won't it. respond to you. Thank you. No, they, there's, no, there's no real person. It's mm. audible. It's to Amazon. Mm. You and there, there you go with your Amazon. So it's, there it is. Under my listing of books, there it is. Also in, you know, I, I wouldn't give up trying to contact them. Don't give up. Keep, like, I've, I've been fighting with customer service myself a little bit lately. But I did get through, and they did make it right. Oh, good. So just don't give up and just keep trying to contact them and annoying them until you get at least answers and where is it and what can I do with it? Yeah, and I find Amazon is really difficult. Especially with Amazon, you need to write the thing every day. Yes. In case you will end up with the same person, that person is off and somebody else is taking the case. Yes. I'm working mostly a uh, customer service, so that's how it works. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yeah. Don't they have something somewhere that you have, like, could, or you could get legal protection that stuff like that doesn't happen to people? That's your sense. copyright oh, once you submit it to the copyright office. Okay. Yep. Yep. But it, now she it does make it easier. get answers. I mean, would that be where you would... I, I don't know. At, oh, at a certain yes. point, you might want to consider yeah. that because I mean that's your that's your work out there. It, it is, and you know if I say, well, how come I'm not getting any royalties in this? They say, well, you just haven't sold enough books, and I'm like, but I don't have any control over. Well, so my I question then would the be, one. okay, how many have I sold then, and where is it for sale? Yeah, I have a whole little chart with that, but it's just zero for it. Yeah, but but, but they won't tell you where it's for sale because they can put it. It's, I mean, for, for your book to hit like a Cracker Barrel, for instance, you know, in the Audible book there, yeah. you know, I don't think it'll ever see there. I, I don't know where it is. They don't but tell me. They be, just, it should you be buy it in through your, Amazon. In your contract. It should be in your contract. Do you have any other questions? Okay. All right. Check that. Thanks. So you recommend everybody getting on copyright? Yes and no. Technically, your work is protected as soon as you write it. If you really want to defend it in court, get a copyright. Um, I copyrighted my first book because I was thinking about it and thinking about it, and I was like, you know what? It's going to be part of a series. I don't want other people to steal parts of this, and I don't have a foot to stand on. Will I copyright the next two books in the series? Probably not, unless it changes because it does affect my bottom line. It's not cheap to file the copyright. It's about seventy dollars per book just to file it. Um, but it does, from what I've read, it is a good legal standing if you need to defend it in court. Okay, so now it's time to write. <laughs> so excited. So. I'm going to kind of break you guys into groups. Thank you. Um, Thanks so much. You're heading out? Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And I have to sadly head out oh, too. No. But I loved your presentation. It was very informative. Oh, good. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks for on coming, ladies. I have that thank out you. as well. Okay, thank you very thanks much. for coming. to brainstorm and as much as we can get in the next oh, 
left over the half an hour. But maybe I was going to have you guys kind of brainstorm and write a little and then share what you were writing with your little small groups. Um, since we're running a little bit short on time and people have to head out, um, we will at least get in our groups. And I want you to just practice some of the things we've done. Um, so your prompt is, they stood among the ruins. And what I would do, you start with your brainstorming tips that you just learned, okay? Um, whether that be to do your bubble, or to free write, or to um, do an outline. Think of however you'd like to do it. And then have at it, okay? And then we're going to kind of mix into groups in a few minutes, probably at the tables that you're at. That'll work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, kids, you have kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a whole different, <laughs> different age group. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And we've got pretty even groups. That'll work. That'll work. Okay, so give you, I'll give you like 15 minutes, get as much down, and then within your small groups, you're going to kind of share what your ideas are and just kind of talk to each other. You want to try our own? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll turn the lights back on. I can figure out how to get out of here. Oh, I have everybody in here, huh? Yeah, you. I don't like to pause these things. 